Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis, and we can now actually complete the Imbaru engine. Now you are going to need all three of these minor arcana card whisper cards. So the first one you get through the bladed path, and that's just doing the seasonal quest, finish week five, you'll get this one. That opens the Imbaru engine. Second one, it is found behind the suspended elemental runes at the end of the labyrinth. Now that's not very clear. Basically when you do... The first two, like, do an encounter, do the traversal. Do the second encounter, do the traversal. And it's in the room with the three portals for the boss fight. Before you go through the portal, if you're facing, like, where you walk in, just head to the right-hand side, and you'll find it tucked off to the side over there. That's where the second one is at. The third one, all you need to do is go into Altars of Summoning before, like, you know, people kick it off. So if you join one in progress, start again, like, try again. And you just need to go to the most elevated one off to like kind of the kind of the right hand side. So not the one lower down and not the main center one. It's the one that has like basically the waterfall. There's a statue and I'll try and show some of this on screen. Same as the last one while I'm talking through it. There is a statue up there if you go up there. And in the beginning, there should be a crystal that's in the statue's hands. If your teammates have already broken it when you get there, the card should be sitting there as well. So that is how you get all three cards. Make sure you come back here to the Lectern of Divination to make sure you can actually, you know, activate the cards. Then we're going to head into the Embaru engine. I'll show you how each stage works so you can fully complete all three. I did a video on the first stage. Hadn't done one on the second one because I knew a third piece was coming. So now this is everything start to finish. All right, one thing I do recommend bringing to the Embaru engine, and this is mostly for stage three, it's hard light. And you'll see why when we get there, if you don't have it, just make sure you've got a solar, a void, and an arc weapon with you, because you can switch. It's not that much of like a time crunch or anything. But if you got hard light, bring it with you. It makes the last part a little easier. Alright, so the first stage, you may have seen the video before, or if you're getting to this season a little bit late. Pretty much all you have to do is find the right symbol around the room, and it just gets progressively a little bit more uh, broad in where you can go. So jump up here, grab this one, go up the next lift to the Embaru engine. There's a story behind the Embaru engine, so go check out the lore on that. It's kind of cool. I just learned about it a little while ago. And then once we get up here, we'll do phase one, phase two, and phase three. They don't seem to have a lot of variety to them, so once you've done them once, you can come back here and knock it out on a weekly basis and probably get a little bit of rewards, but the main rewards you're going to get is probably going to come from the first time, which is this week. That's why being as what I'm going to probably do here is not going to net me very much because I literally just did it today. All right, so this is phase one. We're going to go ahead and activate. Now all you're trying to do is look for the proper symbol. You do not want this thing that looks like a jellyfish to me. I don't know what else to call it than that. And then this looks like Imaru, the like Savathun's ghost. I use was calling it a star, but Imaru, you know, if you want to say the symbols, but star works. Either way, this is the symbol you're looking for. So the first time, open the chest that this is pointing at. Your second set is going to be over here on this little platform. They all come up here. So the chest will spawn and then the symbols will show up. So this is one, because it's got the symbol. And we need two, so we do not want the one with the jellyfish. And notice the symbol will always basically trace a path and then face the front of the chest. So if you literally take the front of the chest and draw a line on the ground and then go up the wall, that's where the symbol is. That'll come more important because the other one's going to be all the way around the room. This is two. Now it gets the whole room and you get a nice little laugh out of Sabathun. Now you can start from the bottom and go up or top and go down. It's really up to you. All I can say is just pick a path and kind of stick with it. You're going to need to check every symbol. So that's a jellyfish. That's a jellyfish. This one, again, travel the path along the ground. Right here, we got a jellyfish. And just try and keep yourself in an order so you don't, like, go back and check these things again. This one's going to be the same way. So this one is facing away. So we're going to follow up underneath. And that is actually one of them. So this is one. Now, this one's probably the only one that doesn't follow that line rule, but maybe... You technically go up and around, so the chest is facing up this disc, and then if you go back around the other side, that's actually one as well. So we've got the Imbaru, or the Amaru symbol here as well. You need to open some of these and just kind of like get here and try and open them. If you have any issues opening them, try and maybe jump underneath to it. 
actually weird. That should open. Well, I know where it's at. Maybe it's just being weird. Gotta get closer to it again or something. There you go. Normally you can just like land on them and open them. All right, so that's number two. So now we want to go vertical. The second tier, you've got these two. Their symbols are on the inside of this area. And again, this is going to be random for everybody, so I'm going to try and show you as much as possible. So this one faces over to this chest. This one faces over to this chest. So if this is the one you need, it's the chest that's like right over there. Now when we get a little more vertical, we can kind of check out this mid-level. So that one is going to be for the one right up there. Uh, let's see, in here, if I can hop my way up, and this is just kind of a little bit of platforming fun for you. You're going to have this one in here, which is actually going to be right there. It's on the little area above, so that's not one of them. It actually works that I got the easier ones down below, because I'm probably going to check all the rest of them. That's another one right here, next to that chest. You got some of these swinging chandeliers, so be careful. Okay, this is another one right here in this room actually it's gonna be on the ceiling in the or it's gonna be tucked over here to the side that's another jellyfish sometimes you get stuck trying to get out that one is gonna be in there as well so i gotta work my way up and hopefully not get smacked in the head all right so this one is actually gonna be on that piece of like shrubbery whatever you want to call it <laughs> And you can jump on this center thing to get a view. So that one is actually the one I need that's in there. I'll show you a few more. You got this one on the middle chandelier. Its symbol is up here. This one, as I think I showed already, is on that big hedge. And this one's here. And then that one is in the room above it. So my final one that I need is gonna be over here because this symbol traces to this one. Not the most obvious, but it does. And this will be our last one. So this will be three for three. And we'll be done with this room. That's kind of a tour around the room. Usually the symbol is not that far away. There's only a couple that you have to trace the path kind of far. So when you're done, follow the big arrow through the door and we'll go up to number two. So that was cunning. That's the first one. Then take a left through the door. If you need to go down a level, there's a portal I'll show you once we get up there this thing these aren't too bad just you know blow your roll just for a half second you probably won't run into them they don't really seem to kill you not the way they would in a dungeon they do wound you and maybe they would kill you if you stay on them too long but i feel like i've been attacked once or twice and not totally dead so not too bad all right so when we get up here takes a minute to rise all the way up yep so we're gonna look for the portal it's going to take you down a level if you need to go down opposite the portal that's the door we're going to need to go in so proceed through the embargo engine we can do that because we've unlocked the other ones run underneath all of these things nose itched that's always fun all right i went too far my fault got ahead of myself that actually takes you to the third level if you come up the first portal, or if you come up the first lift, that opens the last one. What we need to actually go to is this one over here. So if you come up the portal, or the lift, and you got the portal, and go, you know, clockwise around the room. You're looking for this room. This is the second one. Sorry. All right. So this one is very simple. I've done it multiple times, so it goes pretty quick. So I'll just explain it as I go. You're going to activate the event. You're going to have a bunch of enemies. You can shoot them. All you got to do is shoot them in the right order. The deep sight just shows you where to start. You don't have to activate the deep sight. It's going to be the same no matter what you do. So once you know this, you can just knock it out. The path starts here. And all you're going to do is follow where this goes on the ground. So this goes to this guy. This one goes up this direction. It's technically up to this guy here. And then for whatever reason, I have never figured out why it starts to skip i don't know of like what the reasoning is so the knight comes in here and this is the first one it points to but once you get to that guy you start skipping so you're gonna do every other so this one points to this guy back here but you skip him and then you go to this guy because your march continues 
Then if I come up here, the next one would be here. The one after is this one. That's the one you shoot. Then we're going to go outside. And the alternation continues. That's the guy outside, which would be the next one. We need the one after, which if you follow him kind of pointing straight through that wall, it's going to be this guy right here. And here. This is the next one. The one after is this one. Next. One after. Next. And the final one is right behind this rock. And that should do it. So now you've conjured war. And that's the strength test. Alright, so. Once you exit. Same place you came in. Now when you exit, go to the left again. Where I was going the first time. Alright. Same thing. Dodge the big rotating spiky poles. Technical term, I'm sure. In Hive War, of course. And we're going to the third level. And this is where you're going to want hard light. It's just colored symbols like you've seen in the secrets that we've had for Savage Moon Spire. You just have to pick the right symbols and I'll kind of explain at least the reasoning I've got so far. There's only one I had to guess on. So, up in here... That's just kind of trippy. Not entirely sure why we have Savathun's eye over there. Portal to go back down a level if you need to. And then this is the final test. Now, in the comments, if you understand the fourth part of this, let me know so I can, like, pin it or something. So what's going to happen, you're going to have a bunch of doors with symbols all around them. And then if you look at your door, it's going to tell you what you need to shoot. So I need to shoot arc and I need it to be on the left-hand side of the door. So if it's arc on the left, it's always the second door. Don't have to shoot anything else, and you can walk through. That's step one. Second one's gonna be solar. The easiest thing to do, look at the, your door. Solar on top, the only one that is solar on top is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth door. Hit that one, portal will open. Now you get a nice trickery going on on this next one. <laughs> so your symbol is going to be on the right. Now if you turn around, uh, void on the right. If you turn around and look, there's no void on the right. All about perspective. What you need to do is jump across to this fourth one and they're hiding a symbol on the right. So quite impressive little trick there. So then once you're done with that, I backed into the mirror and then it teleported me over here. Now the final one is weird, I will be honest. So this is facing kind of like this direction. And I know this one's first, like I know the order. My only issue is I don't exactly know why. So in the comments, let me know. So it was this one first. Now what I thought is if I came over here like, this one looked right at the one beyond it. So, what I did, came over here and shot this one. That was the next one. But after that, I kind of ran out of ideas. So, if you guys know how it all works, let me know. Uh, but then it was... Probably going to do this in the wrong order. That one. And then this one. So it is one, two, three, four. And then you go through the fourth door that opened. That's it. And you are done. You complete your conjuration of navigation. I actually got an ascendant shard when I finished this one the first time. I literally did it about 30 minutes ago. So I'm not going to get the rewards again. But that is the complete run through for the Embaru engine for you guys. And if you enjoyed that one, drop a like below, leave a comment. If you understand the fourth puzzle, at some point that one's going to click for me. But if you're new and you enjoy my content, hit that subscribe button, hit the alert bell. It's a nice free way to support the channel. Find me on Twitch, find me on Twitter. Lords of the Fallen may be coming soon, so I might be getting some of that coming as well. Have a good one, everybody. I'll see you soon.